Go Battle League Season 13 brings some insane move updates to Pokemon Go. The meta is not the same at all, and today we're going to be talking about what are the best new Pokemon for PvP, and also some Pokemon who got buffed for raids for this update. Let's get into it. Okay, before I actually go through that stuff, I do want to cover a couple things about the season. If all you care about is what's good, what's not, just timestamps, timestamps. You know, you, you've seen a Pokedaxi video. Also, we'll link below this blog post if you want to read it yourself, as I'm not going to be going through every single thing, only the new stuff. Okay, so this season is going to start on December 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and run until March 1st at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, first thing, when the season does end, so December 1st, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You might have to convert that to your time zone. Before you go into the battle menu, make sure you throw on a star piece as you will claim your end of season rewards and those can be multiplied on a star piece. Okay, number one, it says regarding classic cups, trainers as XL Candy has continued to become more accessible thanks to XL Candy becoming more available, blah, 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 blah. We'll be retiring classic cups format after this season. We'll be turning with premier cups more frequently in the future seasons. So yes, there's going to be no more non-XL cups, level 40 cups. You either have XL Pokemon or you don't anymore. So no more classic Master League, which we haven't really seen in a long time. I don't know how I feel about this. Honestly, I like the classic cups just for any newer players who don't have the Mons built yet. But yeah, that, that's gone. Let me know what you think. We're also going to have two Go Battle Days during the season. The first one is the Mythical Wishes Go Battle Day, January 14th, pretty much all day, like from midnight to midnight. Bonuses during this Go Battle Day will be four time stars from win rewards, and you can do up to 100 battles. Also, be timed research during the whole weekend that will get you XP, rare candy, rings inspired by Steven Stone, an elite charge jam. And then the second Go Battle Day will be February 12th, all day, same thing. And it's going to be Go Battle Day for Vulpix. Again, four times start us from win rewards. You can do up to 100 battles during the day. And then specifically from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Vulpix will be guaranteed rewards from reward encounters from PvP. There'll be a shiny increase on Vulpix of 1 in 10. And if you buy the premium track rewards, all reward encounters will be Vulpix. There'll also be a timed research on that whole day, getting you again. XP, Rare Candy, a Vulpix Encounter, and Elite Charge Jam. And also, if you evolve Vulpix into Nine Tails between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., it'll get the Fast Attack Ember. I think Fire Spin is still the better move to run on Nine Tails, but still good to get it in case Ember does get a buff in the future. Finally, this is a legend pose. Just want to show it off because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, the rest of the info, if you guys want to see, it's very basic stuff like what the cups are, what's allowed, all that stuff. Link below. But let's get into the move updates and what's going down. Okay, attack change this season. We have Wing Attack generating more energy. We're guessing you're going to generate one more energy. Poison Fang is getting nerfed, it's going to cost more energy, so goodbye Nato Queen. Charm is also getting nerfed. I've wanted a Charm nerf for the longest time. I didn't even think the Poison Bus were enough, but Charm, not really good anymore. Also, a bunch of new Pokemon are going to be getting moves. I'm just going to quickly scroll through them, but we'll talk about which ones actually matter here. It's mainly just distribution of community day moves. First thing, let's talk about raids. What Pokemon, based on all these new moves being given out, are actually good for raids? And there's actually some big ones. The number one Pokemon that was buffed is going to be Mamoswine. Mamoswine used to be a very terrible ground type raid attacker, but with this move update, Mamoswine, and specifically Shadow Mamoswine, has jumped to the number one overall ground type raid attacker in the game, and also number one DPS. It literally does 19 DPS per second, which is like rivaling some megas. Obviously, the Shadow is going to be better than the regular, but the regular is still very good. So yeah, Mud Slap, high horsepower, throw those on your Mamoswines once the new season starts, and those things are deadly ground type raid attackers. Shadow Mamoswine is now like one of the best raid bonds, because it's so good as an ice type, and it's so good as a ground. We also have Tyrantrum now getting access to Meteor Beam. This is going to help Tyrantrum out in the rankings. It's going to bring it up to the number four overall non-mega. So Meteor Beam definitely helps out Tyrantrum if you have some decent IV ones. There's still obviously Rampardos, Rhyperior, still very, very strong rock types, but it's not bad. Final one I'll mention is going to be Aggron, again, getting a buff in the rock type category. Specifically, Shadow Aggron is now going to be number six overall rock type. And the regular Aggron worse. Obviously, Mega Aggron gets a buff as well, but still, like, not insane buffs for these guys, but just want to mention them. Aggron is a little bit better for raids as a rock type. My boy Aggron has like every single rock type move available, but it's still not good. Okay, that's the raid mons. Let's talk about PvP. What are the new best PvP mons? Starting with the Great League. I do want to note the rankings we're looking at right here are speculative. As the actual numbers for the nerfs and buffs of moves this season has not been confirmed. First of all, the one that really surprised me is going to be Aurorus. Aurorus got access to Meteor Beam and now gives it rank 18 in the Great League. Although Aurorus has a lot of weaknesses. Look at all the weaknesses. It has two double weaknesses to fighting and to steal. I think this Pokemon will still be good, and mainly this Pokemon will be good because of a specific buff to flying types we'll talk about. Next up, honestly, the biggest buffs, and that's going to be to the move Wing Attack, and any Pokemon that got Wing Attack. Wing Attack now generates more energy, so we're going to see Pokemon like Pelipper get a huge buff going up to rank 4. We'll see Noctowl get a huge buff going up to rank 6. Noctowl is so deadly. We'll see Pidgeot going up to rank 9 with Wing Attack. However, no, Wing Attack is a legacy move on Pidgeot, so it's going to be quite expensive. We got Mantine going up to rank 12 with Wing Attack. We got 
Gliscor and even Shadow Gliscor getting a buff with Wing Attack. And I think that's the main reason Aurora is so high on the list is because it needs to counter all these new flying types we're going to see in the meta. The last thing I will say got a buff because Wing Attack got buff is any Steel and Rock type. You'll see Registeel super popular, Stunfisk. Bastiodon has jumped up. Bastiodon was not this high on the ranking list. Any Pokemon that kind of counters flying types is going to be super, super strong right now because of Wing Attack being like one of the new best fast moves in the game. Okay, so that's the Great Lakes. Take a look at the Ultra League now. We're gonna see Pidgeot get a huge buff. It actually has like an 80% win ratio against the Ultra League now with Wing Attack. But again, it is a legacy move, but Pidgeot, XL, and the Ultra League, deadly. We're gonna see Gliscor and Shadow Gliscor as well get buffs. Charizard, which is a fun little one. Legacy, Wing Attack, Charizard getting a huge buff. Same as the Great League, we do see Aurorus getting a huge buff in the Ultra League as well. Powder Snow, Meteor Beam, Weather Ball to handle those flyers. And also it's great because it can handle those dragon types like Garatina Altered, which is really cool to see. We do have Galarian Weezing getting access to a Brutal Swing. It is pretty low on the list, rank 59, but I do want to mention it. And specifically when some limited cups come out with Galarian Weezing being allowed, Brutal Swing definitely helps out that Pokemon. And finally, just like I mentioned before, any Steel Rock type Pokemon like Regirock is super high on the list now. Registeel obviously still very strong, but you see Steelix is up here. Like any sort of Pokemon that resists Wing Attack is going to be doing a lot better now. One thing you'll notice about both the Great League and Ultra League rankings is Nidoqueen Queen is nowhere to be seen. With the Poison Fang nerf, you see Nido Queen's rank 75 in the Ultra League now and like 139 in the Great League. Honestly, I don't like Nido Queen. I think it's an annoying Pokemon to go up against, so I'm kind of happy we got the Poison Fang nerf. And also, Charmers are nowhere to be seen. Alolan Ninetales' best moveset is now Powder Snow. The first Charmer you'll see in the Great League is Wigglytuff, rank 119. In the Ultra League, where, where you'll see it, Ninetales, rank 194. One, 49 like charmers are just not in anymore they just don't do as much damage as they did before it's so crazy how one damage can change the game finally we have the master league not much has really changed in the master league the only ones to mention are going to be mamoswine with high horsepower now helps out a couple of its matchups it can now i think beat dialga more consistently because before it had bulldoze and bulldoze was just a trash move and the only other thing i'll mention is moltres actually got a surprising jump level rank 39 now rank 39 is probably not even something i would really run too much in the master league but with wing attack, sky attack, overheat, Moltres could be fun to try out. Um, beat some of those fairy types, beat some of those steels. Um, yeah, it would be a cool mon to try. And with that being said, that is pretty much it, guys. Those are the best new mons for PvP. It's looking like every league is going to be a flying cup now with so many flyers. But honestly, I'm excited to try out some of these Pokemon. We'll be live streaming it, of course, generally on Saturday, 11 to 1. And then also, super hyped for Mamoswine getting a huge buff in the ground type category. Comment below what your favorite move update is. What's the first Pokemon you're going to be trying for this new season? And follow for tips. Peace. Thank you.